Have you ever run into a thermistor where there wasn't a preset for it in Marlin already? Well, I've got one right here. A while back, I was talking with Chris at Slice Engineering, and they were in the middle of testing their high temp thermistor for their Mosquito hot end. Now, typically, the Mosquito takes a cartridge type thermistor, but Chris had a few of the same thermistor available in the glass bead type, and he didn't have anything to test them on. So he sent me a few, and I thought I'd give them a test. Now, of course, that was a while ago, and I'm behind, and I never got around to testing them, but I thought I'd go ahead and do that today. Now, if you have a thermistor that isn't pre-configured in Marlin, you can add that thermistor via a table if the manufacturer provided you that table. Now, you can go through a process of trying to guess what that table would look like for a thermistor, but usually, if the thermistor didn't come with a table, it's probably not worth using, and it's easier just to buy one that does come with a table or is already pre-configured in Marlin. So today I'm going to walk you through all the steps to get the thermistor set up and to get that temp table created in Marlin so that you can use a thermistor that might not be preset already. So let's get into it. So here's the thermistor we're dealing with. Again, it's from Slice Engineering. These are good up to 450 C for accuracy. And it's pretty much going to be the top tier of thermistor that you're going to find in the hobby market anywhere. When installing a thermistor, you're going to want to have some fiberglass sleeve to go down over the legs of the thermistor. Now, this can be kind of hard to find. I get mine from Philostruder. Now, it might seem kind of expensive on their site, but if you need a lot of it, contact Philostruder and they can probably help you out. Typically, a thermistor is going to have wire that looks like this on it. This is 24 gauge stranded wire, but the sleeving's good for a little higher temp. This stuff's good for 200 C. So when you're wiring up a thermistor from scratch, you might want to look at something like this, just so you don't melt the insulation. Now I'm going to cut my fiberglass sleeving down a bit. You want the sleeving to get up as close to the glass bulb as possible, but you're going to have to have a little room on the end to be able to solder the wires on. And we'll just slide these on the legs of the thermistor, like so. Now I'm going to slide some heat shrink down over these so that we can cover up the solder joint after we're done. Now we can solder these two leads on the thermistor leads. Now when you're soldering a thermistor, be extra careful because too much heat can cause some things to get loose inside that thermistor and then it won't be accurate any longer. So just go slow, use low heat, try not to get it too hot. So the soldering's done, I'm just going to use some heat shrink to make the transition from the fiberglass sleeve over to the wire and we should be all set. And done. And it's probably a good idea before we go installing this in anything to check and make sure we have resistance after we soldered it. These should be somewhere around 500K at 25C. It's a little cooler than that in here, so I'll take 600, not bad. So I heated up the hot end about 215. I thought it'd be interesting to take a before reading of the temperature. I don't know how close this is. This is a really cheap thermistor I just set to one, but I thought it'd be cool to take a temp. My meter only does Fahrenheit, and I've got my probe really close to the stock thermistor location. I'm hovering around 410 Fahrenheit, which is 210C. So not too bad. So we've got our new thermistor wired up and we've taken a stock thermistor reading. Now we need to get into Marlin and make our new temp table. So before we go to the temp table, I'm gonna show you this configuration underscore ADV.h. If you uncomment this line, this is gonna report the ADC values in the terminal. ADC is analog to digital conversion. So you could set a temperature and then record this ADC value and then try to build a temp table line by line while you go up the temperature scale. It's not that easy to do and it's much easier to use the table that the vendor gives you and probably a lot more accurate. So you can give it a try if you want to. I'll show you how it works here in a little bit, but go with the vendor table if you can. So now we'll start to build our own temp table from the vendor specs. So we'll go into our Marlin config files and we'll scroll down. Let's right click and open up thermistor names, edit with notepad plus plus, and you see there's another high tip thermistor down here, number 66. I'm just going to add the slice engineering thermistor as 67. So let's just copy this line and we'll paste it below and let's set our ID to 67 and I'm just going to name it slice. So we can save this. We'll go back to the configuration files. I like to just grab one of these thermistor tables and use it as a template. I pretty much erase everything, but it's easier just to copy one. So I'm going to copy 66 since we went with that one already. I'm just going to paste it back in here. I'll change the name to thermistor table 67, and then let's edit it with notepad plus plus. So these are the values for thermistor 66, but we're pretty much going to do the same thing for our thermistor. The OV stands for oversampling. If you've seen previous versions of Marlin, 
they actually have a value times over sample equals another value. This is the new way of doing it, and that's the way it should be going forward. So pretty much, we're just going to update our notes up here, and we're going to copy this syntax to use our slice engineering temp table. We'll go ahead and change this to 67. And here's the temp table that slice engineering provides. They give you a lot more information than we actually need for Marlin. So this info up here, this is what we can use to update our comments. So this is resistance at 25C. That's 500 kilo ohms. So we can just put that in our comments. R25 equals 500. K ohm. And this is our beta value. I'm not an expert on thermistors, but basically this is trying to show the relationship between resistance and temperature on a curve. Ours is 3800 K. That's about all I know. So we'll update this to 3800. And we have our standard 4.7 kilo ohm pull-up resistor. That is required. And we'll just label this slice engineering 450 C. Now onto the table part. We can wipe out everything here in the middle. You have to have this curly bracket and the semicolon at the end. That completes this curly bracket here. So back to the slice engineering temp table. Now slice engineering, again, they've given us a lot more information than we need. All we really need is this ADC count and the temperature. They've also listed the resistance in ohms and in kilo ohms, but we don't need those values in Marlin. Again, ADC is analog digital conversion. That's going to take the resistance that it reads and put it into a digital conversion value that Marlin likes and their Arduino likes. So this is the value that you're going to use for your temp table. The only real caveat here with their information is that Marlin likes to read it from hottest to coolest, and this table is flip-flopped. So I'm just going to take all of these values and copy them, and then I'm going to open a new Google Sheet, and I'm going to right-click, paste special, values only. And this is just so I can alter the values and rearrange them. So we don't need columns B or C, so we'll delete this one, delete this one, then we'll select A and go to data, and then we're going to sort sheet A to Z. That'll flip it so the top temperature, the 500 degrees is at the top, and the low temperature is at the bottom. Now we can just take all of this and copy it again. Now we'll go back to Notepad++ and our temp table, and we can just paste it right here. Another great thing about Notepad++ is you can make a lot of edits all at the same time. And we need to add our syntax to all these numbers. So if you click up here next to the first number and you hold the Alt key, you can select this whole column all the way down. And all these values start with a curly bracket. So we need to do open curly bracket. Then we can come down here and straighten this up. And then come back to the top and select this column again. And we'll do space, OV, and then open parenthesis, we need to add a space right here, and then after our ADC values, it goes in the thousands, we can hold alt again and select this column, and we can add close parenthesis, comma, and then over here on the right of our temperature, we can select the column again, and we can do the close curly bracket, and all of these need a comma except the last one, so we'll go ahead and add a comma, and then at the very last one, we'll take it off. And that is our temp table. So we can save this, temp table 67. And there's only one more edit we need to make. So we'll go back into the config files. And we're going to edit thermistertables.h. We'll scroll down to 66. We'll copy this whole if statement. We'll paste it in right below it. We'll change this to 67. The thermistor table to 67. And we'll update the comment. Slice 450C thermistor. And we can save it. And then if you open up the Marlin INO file once again, we can come over here to the pull down. We can go all the way to the bottom. And there's our thermistor table number 67. You can see it has all of our info in it. So now we should be able to use that 67 as a thermistor. So let's go to configuration.h. We'll scroll down to the thermal settings. Let's add a comment about our new thermistor. Number 67, slice engineering, 450C, 4.7K pull up. That looks good. And down here, temperature sensor zero, we'll switch that to 67. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and verify. The verify looks good. Now we can go ahead and upload. Upload is done. Let's go ahead and open up Pronterface, make sure everything's working as we expect it to. Go ahead and connect. Now your thermistor is probably reporting some crazy thing because you haven't plugged in the new thermistor yet. 
But you can also see these ADC values right here. This is what I was talking about before. If you want to go temperature by temperature, maybe 10 degrees at a time, and record that value, you can actually build a table to load as your thermistor table. I don't think it's quite as accurate as the one from the vendor, but you can give it a try with this added option if you'd like. You'll need some sort of thermocouple and meter to be able to do that. So it looks like everything's okay. Let's go ahead and swap out our existing thermistor with our new slice engineering thermistor. I'm just going to remove the old thermistor screw. Now it looks like I'm going to be able to remove this one pretty easily, but you might have to clean up your heat block or heat it up with a heat gun or even go back to your old firmware and use your existing thermistor to heat up that block to get it free. It just depends on what the design you have. So you might have to have a little bit of heat, but it looks like I'm going to be okay. But this is something to consider before you flash your firmware, because you might have to use the old version, depending on how different the new thermistor might be. Old thermistor out, good thermistor in, good enough for this test. I don't intend to leave this permanent. We'll cable up to the board on T0. We'll power up, the thermistor readings look about right. Let's go ahead and set it to 215. We're hovering right around 215 and 415, 16 Fahrenheit. Probably need to run a PID tune, but other than that, I think we're looking good. And that's how you install a new thermistor table into Marlin. Now, not all of us are going to need this 450C thermistor. Most of the time, the generic 100K thermistors work just fine. But if you have a high temp project and a mosquito hot end that can handle it, having an accurate temperature is going to be critical. And that's something I hope to investigate in the future. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Log, your hot end is filthy.